Bonjour, mes amis. Welcome back to our channel, where we explore the fascinating world of vintage computers. Today, we have a special treat for you as we dive into the iconic French microcomputer known as the Thompson T0770. Get ready to embark on a journey back in time as we explore the features, history, and significance of this classic machine. Bonjour les amis, thanks to Richard for the voiceover. Uh, I let him continue with you in a moment, but I wanted to take the opportunity of this video to share a few words about me and this channel. So my name is Anton, I'm French, and I have an awful accent when trying to speak English, so that's why I'm letting my English-speaking friends do the voiceover for me and uh, thanks to them. Fortunately, I'm very comfortable with uh, written English uh, that's why I have no issues uh, writing the scripts for these videos you see on this channel. I've created this channel a few years ago, Retro Dream. Um, it's all about retro computers and retro gaming, which is my greatest passion. Uh, I've been into this since my 20s. I remember uh, when using Windows 95, I was already trying to emulate computer systems from the 80s, so it's a very long story. And if you like uh, retro stuff from the 80s, you can also check my other channel, Age of Ink, which is about board games, game books, and Tolkien, which is my favorite author. Now, the T0770 was my very first machine, so I can tell you about my own experience about using back in the day. Now, I let you continue discovering this mysterious French machine. Again, thanks to Richard for the voiceover. See you later on the channel. Au revoir. Until now, the only extensive review I've seen about Thompson computers in the English language was from Neil at RMC Retro. Neil's video is great, as usual, but it's pretty much the only one around. And also, he doesn't really cover the T07 since he focuses on the M05 and M06 from his collection. Our video here should compensate for this. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, in the wake of the growing interest in personal computers around the world, France aimed to establish its own computer industry and reduce its dependence on foreign technologies. To achieve this, the French government initiated the Plan Informatique pour tous, which means computing for all. Informatique pour tous. The French electronics company Thompson was chosen to develop microcomputers to be used in schools for educational purposes. That was the official intention. The secret wish behind was to create a French success story the like of Apple in the US or Sinclair in the UK. The goal to achieve was very ambitious and Thompson engineers began working in earnest. The first machine was soon released. Too soon, as we'll see. The Thompson T07, which stands for Teleordinateur 7, came out in 1982 as a low-cost microcomputer, primarily intended for the educational market. It featured an 8-bit Motorola 6809 microprocessor running at 1 MHz, 32K of RAM, and a built-in basic programming language. Despite being less powerful than some of its international counterparts, the T07 gained popularity in French schools and some homes due to its affordability and educational focus. It was relatively well received for its ease of use and accessibility. It really looked like it was especially made for beginners to learn computing. And that was its doom. The T07 was clearly not a sheer success on a wider market. The machine was slow, rather ugly, but the thing that users hated the most was its awful membrane keyboard, which didn't even have the French accents, which was really a shame. Having learned from this, Thompson introduced in 1984 an enhanced version called the T0770. It featured a more powerful processor, the Motorola 6809E, running at 2 MHz. It also had more installed memory. The 70 in the model's name reflects its total memory. 48K of main RAM, plus 16K of video RAM, plus 6K of ROM. The color palette was extended from 8 to 16 in 320 by 200 pixels resolution. It also included two cartridge slots for expanding the computer's functionalities. 
Not only this version was two times more powerful, but it also corrected one of the main flaws of its predecessor. The T07's infamous membrane keyboard was first replaced by a rubber one, and finally by a mechanical one, which was way more comfortable. As a result of these improvements, the T0770 was ready to roll out from assembly lines without blushing before its competitors, and appeared as a decent machine for the time, especially given its low price, 3,600 French francs equivalent to 400 US dollars at the time. At the same time, Thompson released the low-cost M05, a more compact machine with slightly less capabilities, designed for the larger market of cheap computers. The exact same software could be run on both the MO and TO machines. This is SVM, the number one reference French magazine on microcomputing during the 80s and 90s. It was still around until 2010. This was the first magazine in the world to publish computer performance tests and comparison benchmarks. Here's the May 1984 issue, which covers the release of Thomson's new MO5 and TO770. The article is enthusiastic about the machine's capabilities for such a low price and portrays them as great competitors for the Spectrum and C64. And indeed, in France, they were. There's another article dedicated to their use in schools. This kid here could have been me. In May 84, I was in a schoolroom just like this one and using the exact same computer system. On this other photo, we can see Apple II machines. These were fewer in schools and they were used for more complex courses than the Thompson. Commodore 64 were even more scarce. If I remember well, we saw them as the Rolls Royce, whereas the Thompson were the Renault cars. Let's take a look at the design and hardware of the Thompson T0770. The computer featured a sleek, compact design with a real typewriter-style keyboard. It used a digital cassette tape drive for storage as well as a cartridge system. It also included a light pen called Crayon Optique in French, which could be used with a variety of software. It came with an operating system called T0770 Basic. And look at that joystick. Isn't it something? But even though they looked amazing to my nine-year-old eyes, which didn't see much video games before that, the machine's graphic capabilities were rather poor for 1984. It has 16K of video RAM only, and its 16 color mode was very theoretical. It was actually eight basic colors and 16 using intensity control with proximity constraints. Now, these constraints must have been very constraining indeed, because I don't remember playing any game with more than about 10 colors on screen. Nevertheless, I spend countless hours playing games on this machine. I remember playing from sunrise to sunset when I was at my aunt's. My parents would never allow such a thing, but my aunt did, and I found it the coolest thing in the world. I was especially fascinated by this game called L'Aigle d'Or, the Golden Eagle in French. It was a mega hit, and every French kid of that time is sure to remember it. You had to explore a haunted castle with many dark rooms full of traps. A classic scenario, but really well rendered for the time. And if this is one of the first games you ever play, age 9, I can tell you that you're sure to fall in love with the computer it runs on. It also had a very good sequel, where you explored a jungle full of snakes and unfriendly tribes before finding your way down the river, reaching the ancient temple and trying to find the precious object. The T07 had other interesting games. Empire was my first strategy game, where you had to manage resources and build armies to conquer provinces. Sapiens was a very good survival game, with a rudimentary but efficient 3D view and a 2D one where landscape objects were randomly generated into beautiful screens. Airbus A320 was my first flight simulator. I discovered almost every genre on this machine.
Mandragore was the first French computer RPG, and like L'Aigle d'Or, it was widely known in France. It was first developed for the C64 before being ported to the T07, my first computer, and the MSX, my second one. So this was the first game I could actually compare running on different machines, which was very instructive back in the day. Here are the two versions compared. There were other, simpler games that I enjoyed as a kid. Many of them were developed for Thompson machines and nothing else. On the other hand, there were relatively few ports to the Thompson of games from other machines. Sorcery and Solo Flight are among the few I can remember. So it essentially remained a French machine with French software. While the T07 and M05 series sold rather well in France, that certainly wasn't the case abroad. Despite specific models dedicated to the export, Nothing to compare with the international recognition gained by other microcomputers of the era, such as the C64, ZX Spectrum, or Apple II. But even in France, these were not the most popular. The top-selling 8-bit computer in France was by far the Amstrad CPC. Still, Thompson sought to build on the relative success of the T0770 and the M05 by releasing upgraded models in 1986, the M06, T08, T09, and T09 Plus. But though these machines had improved capabilities, they were costly and couldn't compete with the likes of the Commodore Amiga or Atari ST. Thompson then briefly tried itself at the IBM compatible market with the T016, but was forced to give up in 1989. The French microcomputer adventure had lasted just 10 years. So what results in 10 years? On the bright side, Thompson computers were widely spread in French schools in the early 1980s. They provided an affordable and accessible platform for learning basic computer usage. They had a significant impact on the French computer industry and fostered the growth of a generation of computer users and developers in the country. They were instrumental in introducing computing to a wider audience. Many French students and enthusiasts got their first hands-on experience with computing using these machines. But that's about it. Limited success. The ambitious bet was lost. There would not be any French Apple in the computer industry. France was far more successful in the telecommunications area with the Minitel, which was like internet with a nationwide usage beginning as early as 1980. 15 years before the internet became used worldwide. The Minitel was the real French success story. It was used by everyone and generated an enormous market for network services. But that's another story. <laughs>